What is happening, everyone? Today, I want to look at a logic problem. Basically, it's a simplification. We're going to simplify this long, ugly, chaotic looking thing. And we're going to do it and explain some of the rules as we go along. So if you have a problem that looks similar to this, similar to this you'll be able to use the same rules and the same steps, hopefully. Um, I know everyone, uh, every problem looks different. Um, but hopefully this will give you some insight. So first thing is this is defined as being, sometimes we say not, but it's a negation. I like the word not because it's not true, right? It's not true. P is not, P is not true. But if P is false, then what does that mean? Well, if it's not false, then it's true. So the negation will just take the opposite truth value. If we have false, it's true, true, it's false. All right, so this not out here is negating this entire statement. That's the why you have the outside parentheses. It's saying that everything inside of this take the opposite or negate it. Now negations will distribute. And we should think of this as I'm going to highlight two portions of the inside. Let's call this A and this B. So what we have here is essentially A implies B. Now, this is a if A then B statement. And the only time that statement is false is if I have true implies false, then the statement itself is false. I did a, another logic video where I talk more about that. So if I'm negating this, I'm saying that, well, I want this statement to be the negation means that, I'm just gonna say it, that if I say if A then B is false, that's true or that's false only when A is true and B is false. So this is a logical, equivalence. What I mean by that is if I negate an implication, this is logically equivalent to A and not B. Again, because the only time the implication is false is when A is true and B is false. So when I distribute, or when we distribute, we are doing this together, this not symbol we are taking A implies B and then returning A and not B. And so what's our A here? Well, it's just the statement, ooh, not P and not Q. And then we're changing this to an and. My and symbol looks terrible. And then not, not, not R or not P implies R. All right, so that's that long outside. Now I said that not P is the same as saying, well, not true would be false. So what if it's not not P? Well, it's the same as saying if it's not not true, I think kids love saying not true. This is not false, which is true. Um, so it essentially leaves the truth value unchanged. So if the truth value is unchanged with a double negation, that means not not P is the same as P. Uh, I'm going through that because it's just saying that I could get rid of the no double negation in front of the second statement. So then we have not P and not Q and not not just becomes Nothing. All right, we're getting there. So now we have a another identity. This one has a name. That's named after a mathematician, logician. Logician sounds like magician, but the Morgan's law. The Morgan law for and statements says if I have the negation of a statement that's A and B, 
this is equivalent to saying A, not A, or not B. The reason for that is A and B is a true statement only when A and B are both true. So if I negate that, that means that not A or not B, right? It means that either A is false or B is false. So that's why the and becomes the fault or the and becomes the or. And if you are a little ahead of me, you'll know that this or statement becomes a and statement for this almost the same reason. A or B is true exactly when one or both of these things are true. So if A is true and B is false, then the statement's true, vice versa. And if both statements, A and B, are true, then the statement's true. So when does that negation happen? It's exactly when not A or and not B, right? It's exactly when both of them are false. So that's the Morgan's Law. Why are we talking about the Morgan's Law? It's because we have a negation of an and statement. So this is logically equivalent to not P and not not Q. Now we know from above that not not Q is just Q. So let's rewrite the statement then. We have not P and Q and not R or not P implies R. All right, so already it looks a little bit better, right? Uh, let's simplify this inside here. We have this statement here, which is saying not P implies R. Now we talked about that above. We said that the implication P, if P, then R. The only time this is false is when P is true and, I almost wrote the word, but and, R is false. So that's logically equivalent. So it's replacing that. So now we have not P and Q and not R or P and not R. All right, again, getting there. Now we have this lovely property that's called the absorption law. And this law says if I have A or B and A, this will be just logically equivalent to A. It's not dependent upon B at all. Let's look at why. If A is true, then obviously A, right? Because this could be true or false in that case. It doesn't matter. Now, if A is false, the OR statement says that this has to be true. So B and A has to be true. And the only time that an AND statement is true when both things are true, so both B and A are true. So the absorption says, in this case, if I have A and B and A, that A is the result. So what we have on the right-hand side is R or P and not R. So I have not R and or P and not R. So absorption tells us that whatever the case may be, that we have not R. So this whole right-hand side after the and statement becomes not R. So what are we left with? We're left with not P or Q and not R. So at this point, we ask ourselves, are we done? Now we could do... Uh, distribution of R, it'll just make the uh, statement bigger, meaning there'll be not R and Q or not R and not P, which is logically equivalent to what we have here. I'm going to stop here because I think this is simpler than if I were to do the distribution. So we're going to say this is done. So this is a simplification. Um, let's write it out because it's maybe impressive to look at. So what we're saying is not, not P and not Q implies not, not R, and not P implies R is exactly the same as not P or Q and not R. And obviously we would prefer a truth table on that and not the left-hand side. So the simplification is nice. Uh, we use some, some rules here. 
Let me recap the rules just so you can. If you are interested in what we did, we had to Morgan's Law. And I'm going to write this as an and statement. So A, uh, we negate A and B is the same as not A or not B. We have the Morgan's Law for an or statement. So A or B is logical equivalent to A and not B. We had the logical equivalence. I don't like LQ, but logical equivalence of the negation of P implies Q, let's say, will be the same as P and not Q. We, of course, had the double negation, which is not not A is the same as A. We had absorption. which says that if I have A or B and A, that's just logically equivalent to A. So I think that's all of the properties we used. Now that's quite a lot of them, but you see anytime we have these sort of logic problems, symbolic logic problems that we're always going to use some laws or some identities and it makes life much easier. Okay, so that's a simplification. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more uh, on logic, um, this was typically be found in a discrete mathematics course. Um, generally, it's the first month of any college level discrete math course. Undergraduate will be logic, truth tables, um, inferences, all that stuff. So let me know what you think if you want to see more. Uh, if, let me know if you don't want to see any more. Go ahead. Let me know. All right. Have a good night.